Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this devotional on September 4th. I hope you're having a good Friday, and I hope you have an even better weekend. Well, we started a new thing um, this first week in September, which is anyone in our church family can sign up for a date to lead a devotion. You're given a few verses from the lectionary to choose from, and then do your devotional on that. So I decided to do it today. My name is Michelle. Hello. Um, I decided to continue um, with the story that we've been talking about in Exodus. Um, so today the devotional will be specifically on Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 through 29. So again, that's Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 through 29. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heaven, and there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all of the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. But Moses said, you must also give us our sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. And even we do not know what we must serve the Lord and serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. The Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take heed to yourself, and see my face no more. For in the day that you see my face, you shall die. So Moses said, You have spoken well. I will never see your face again. Well, me being a theater major, whenever I read almost anything anymore, I always tend to look at it in questions of who has the power, who thinks they have the power, and who's trying to get the power, kind of going through there. And I think that kind of unwraps us really well. So what just happened is we just had the plague of locusts. Pharaoh said, no, I will not let your people go. And so the next plague is specifically darkness. Now, an interesting, to note, or an interesting thing to note about these plagues is that each plague specifically has the same two end results that what God wants to show with each plague, which is one, that God is all powerful, and two, that the God of Israel is the one true God. Now you can see this, every single plague is specifically um, picked out and done in a way so that um, no one can have any doubts to what's happening and why. So this darkness, now this is not a darkness like, oh, like, the power has gone out. Like even at this time in Egyptian civilization, they had the ability to have lighting at night. But this was an overwhelming darkness. I can't imagine it like a weighted blanket. I mean, people literally couldn't rise. They didn't rise. They didn't see each other. Nobody left. It's like they were all like huddled in place and scared. Maybe like in the middle of like a storm or going through that this is what the darkness was. It was all, all encompassing. Again, nobody rose. It was something like, as verse 21 said, that this darkness, which may even be felt. Ugh, pretty scary. But going through, again, the Israelites still have light in all their dwellings. Well, at this time, um, the, um, for the Egyptian gods, they had all these different gods that they were worshiping. And one of the Egyptian gods is the god of Amun-Ra. Uh, that was the god of sun and wind. So if at this time this plague is put on, you know, well, they already have the, the, sun, the sun god, basically. So clearly this god of Israel who's putting a plague on them is stronger and is doing this and is the, true, is the one true god. Well, then even if you try to twist it and say, no, we must have done something to upset Amun-Ra ourselves. Well, then the plague that's put upon them, again, the God of the Israelites is there protecting and keeping them protected. And you can see this through a lot of the plagues. I mean, going through, um, there's the um, God, God Osiris, which was um, the God of like death, life, and um, sprouting vegetation. Well, they've already lost all of their um, crops with locusts. And they've also lost all of um, their livestock 
that's another another um, guide countering that the Egyptians have specifically lost all of their livestock has died from pest, um, pestilence. So then um, you have the Israelites who are clearly being protected. So even if you don't believe their goddess was putting a plague on this one um, on Egypt, clearly their God's keeping them safe and protected. So God again is the one who has power in a situation. Now who thinks they have the power in the situation? Well, that's the pharaoh. The pharaoh. The pharaoh specifically says, "Go serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you." Now, this is actually different than what he had said in um, um, verse eight. So we're going a little bit before what I just read. So verse eight, uh, Moses and Aaron have come to talk to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says to them, "Go serve the Lord your God. Who are the ones you're? Uh, who are the ones that are going?" And Moses responds in verse 9, we will go with our young and our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds. We will go, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. Basically, Pharaoh was wanting to let go just the men to go. So, like, they can go, but we're going to keep all the children. Like, you can have these people go. And God and Moses went, absolutely not. We'll tell you exactly what we're going with. We are going with everybody. We're going with all of our livestock. We're going with all of our crops. We're going with our children. All the Israelites are going together and having this. So now um, um, Pharaoh Ramesses has um, kind of changed and he's trying to negotiate. That's the word I'm going to use. He's negotiating, trying to negotiate with the, with the Lord saying, yeah, you know, well, you know what? I will let your people go. That's what you want anyway. So you and your little ones, so I'm making the deal a little bit better. You and your little ones can go now, and then we'll keep your, um, your, your livestock, your flocks and stuff here. Again, they are hungry as they have lost all this. But what he's doing is he thinks, I still have the power. I still have the power in this situation. That's not what God wants in this. God wants um, submission in this. It is God. Again, through, through these plagues, God is showing clearly that he is all powerful. God is all powerful and God is the one true God. Pharaoh was seeing and has seen many points of evidence of these facts going through. And yet he's still trying to hold some power in the situation going, no, 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 no. Um, here, let's, let's give it a little give and take. No, that's not how it works. It was actually proclaimed exactly what is going to happen, what, what they wanted specifically of um, all of the Israelites, um, men, women, children, everybody, crops and livestock to go through. Now, why I'm bringing this up is that when reading this today, it was really Pharaoh who I kind of related to and went, oh my goodness, isn't that life at times? I don't know about you, but you ever feel like we see it like, I mean, I'm Christian that like, I know the power of God and going through. And yet I tend to negotiate with God about different parts in my life or going through. Have you ever tried to negotiate with God, whether it's God not being a part of all parts of your life that for some people, um, God is with them Sunday mornings and they go and they think about God maybe on a Wednesday night, but the rest of the week, isn't there or there are certain parts or aspects where they go well this is where i bring god into it but this isn't really a god thing i don't see this i mean people have those bumper stickers that say jesus is my co-pilot or jesus take the wheel but when scripturally when we let jesus into our hearts shouldn't it actually be that we've made the decision that jesus always has the wheel <laughs> that they're always leading us but that's supposed to be that we've now made it that we will lead a Christ-like life and that we will always have that. Now, I'm not saying that we're not going to stray, but that's the whole thing is that they are supposed to be, or you know, Jesus and God are supposed to be what's in charge of our life always. But, and yet there are times that we go, well, you know, I'm volunteering for this or I'm doing this. So like, God, please don't judge me for that reoccurring sin I'm not actually looking at and working on or yeah I'm really good at noticing um, problems and um, people I need to help in my community or different things in the world while I'm at church and working on those missions but I may not see it in my day-to-day -day life going through 
So I looked at that and I went, man, I really wish I could have, um, be like Moses actually in this. I really like it that he says, um, well, where is that? For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. And even we do not know what we must serve the Lord with until we arrive there. I mean, I'm not actually a person. There are some people who have these five-year goals. I'm actually personally not good at that. Maybe you are. But isn't it interesting to know that Moses is already planning ahead and looking toward that? Now, I'm not good at five-year goals, but I do plan my life ahead. Like, I think I have a lot of the activities and different things I'm doing for work and in life through about the mid of December right now. But does that mean I always planned in specifically what my goals are and what I'm going to work on specifically for Christ and my own personal faith walk and journey? I mean, I guess there, I don't know, again, personally, I'm talking personally going through that. I do think of it around Lent, but I should be thinking about that the whole year round of like, what are my goals? How, how am I working to create, um, increase, um, to, um, keep my faith journey going and to keep increasing my relationship with the Lord. So I guess what I'm taking from this is, and I hope, I hope you do too, is like maybe taking a moment to think of ways, what are you negotiating with the Lord and not actually working on? Or what are some goals that you can set up with the Lord? But again, I just love this. I'm going to read this again. For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God, and even we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. There's a prayer I learned actually when I first started joining First Baptist Church and first started at the Logos program, which the kids were reciting this in a class and I heard it and it just, it's such a simple prayer, but it really spoke volumes to me. And if you've seen me lead anything with the kids, you've probably heard this prayer before as I've repeated it. And it seems like every time I use it, I see it in a different light and a new line um, speaks to me. But um, it's such a simple prayer, but it's the Lord, please be in my, Lord, please be in my head and all my thinking. Please be in my eyes and all my seeing. Please be in my ears and in my listening. Please be in my mouth and in my speaking. Please be in my heart and my understanding. Lord, please be in me, all of me. And that's really right now, all of those are so important in our world always. And right now what's really standing out in that prayer today for me is specifically that last verse of Lord, please be in me, all of me, all aspects of my life. I mean, we think about God when the times are bad or struggles, but also, I mean, God rested on the seventh day. God gave us these things to enjoy too, but we also need to live Christ-like lives always going through and that every aspect of our life, there is no separation of God from us. I know some of you are also talking about what about free will though? Didn't free will God does give us free will to make our own decisions in life that's true and that's it's our free will that we get to choose to let God into our lives and do that and that that is what we're supposed to do when we um um accept Christ into our heart so that's what I'm going to personally work on and I hope that gives you, you are able to find some time for reflection and go through too so thank you um will you please pray with me dear Lord there's a lot going on in our world today. Some things that aren't new are just being brought alight in different ways, different injustices. And there's still people that are hungry. A lot more people that are sick right now. People that are struggling in different ways, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally going through. Dear Lord, I please ask you that we can all see each other and be there to help each other. Dear Lord, help us to reflect and to see in what ways we're negotiating and what ways we can be open-minded, outspoken, have an open heart to serve you, to love you, to worship you by helping others, by using the gifts that you've given us to share your love and your power, that you are powerful, you are the one true God. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Have a good weekend.